So welcome back to part two of our Sulcata tortoise discussion. This is Paradise Ranch and we're building the Gavilan Hills Vineyard, but we're going to be talking about Sulcata tortoises shortly. If you want to subscribe and follow along, we'd love to have you. Please join us in our little adventure here. Right now I want to talk about the environment, the environment, their enclosure, and the housing for large sulcata tortoises. The enclosures we have were easy. We, we were lucky because we had a large side yard that allowed us to have grass, microclimates, and some rock and lots of room for them to roam and graze and do what they need to do. Now, as I said earlier, these guys are from Northern Africa where it's very warm and they want nice warm climates. 85, 90 degrees during the day, 75 at night, um, never getting really below 50 or 60, which is really difficult when you're in environments like last night, the temperature got down to 40, but in both of the houses for Simon and Garfunkel, I have heaters in there that keeps the temperature above 60 degrees in, at night when it gets pretty cold. So there are all different kinds of enclosures. People put up cinder blocks, other people put up bricks and blocks, um, fencing. But what I've done is I actually use two by sixes and some metal stakes and some four by fours, but I use metal, metal stakes. What I did was I ha used to have just one two by six along this section of the property. And Simon would walk up and down it and do his thing and he knew he could never really get over it. Then all of a sudden, a couple weeks ago, the sucker actually got out in this corner. You can see right there in the corner where he kept digging and trying to climb over, he actually did. And he got out and was out for a day or so. So what I ended up doing was forced to do was I put another two by six up. And I'll be painting that a little later. But this is simply two by sixes. It's about 12 inches high with three foot steel metal stakes in the ground. When Garfunkel showed up, I had to change a few things and I had to make a much higher structure over here. So this is a little bit higher only because I want to keep Simon and Garfunkel separate. Now, this enclosure is on this one. I put up some four by fours sunk in a little bit into the ground. And so they're only about 18 inches into the ground. But you can see this wall when I'm pushing on it right now, it's not going anywhere. So I put an enclosure up that wraps completely around this side, goes along the planter, and then goes up to the fence. Now, I've got some different heights here, so I changed it around a bit, but Garf Garfunkel just seems to walk along the edge and looks around and doesn't really try and dig or go or get himself out. The last little part I had was I have a chain link fence and this chain link fence was not going to work for Mr. Garfunkel because he was going to be able to dig through this. So what I ended up doing, as you can see, is I put two by eight and two by six boards up against the fence. It's actually attached to those four by four posts. So now even when he pushes on it, he's not going to get out. So this was a fairly simple enclosure using just two by sixes, two by eights, and those are some two by tens, I believe, on the top row there. And when I get these done later, I'm going to be painting them the same color as I had the enclosure before, so it'll look a little nicer here in the yard. When Simon was here by himself, and it was just Simon over in that area, I had a, I had a problem because I couldn't really get lawnmower. I had to pick the lawnmower up over top of the fencing I had up. So what I've done here is, as you can see, I've actually hinged a portion of the enclosure, the wood enclosure. So now it gives me the ability to open that up. And when I have guests here, I can actually open it up and have them walk through as opposed to jumping over the that 18 inch high fence right there. The same holds true on the enclosure for for Garfunkel, I had this fencing, as I put it in, I just put a large gate in. I wanted to make sure it was large enough that I had to, if I had to, I would be able to actually 
bring my tractor or the or my truck if I needed to through that little enclosure there. I know the thing I'm I need to be able to bring a vehicle in here and I made, I made a big mistake when I was building this. Never dawned on me while I was building this whole enclosure last month that I still had my Jeep carrier sitting right in the middle of the of the enclosure. So I'm going to have to back my Jeep in through that gate that I have there. I'll back the Jeep in and pull that dolly out. Probably going to do it here over the weekend. Since, since Garfield is the big boy in the environment here, I've got a little extra area for him because I've only got a temporary housing for him before I get a chance to build the new stuff. Sorry about the blower. There's a little area that I've created up underneath this tree that gives him the ability to do a little digging. He, he's done some digging, but not much so far, I think. The more he gets into this, I think he'll be, be doing pretty good. There is one portion of the enclosure that I want to kind of explain to what I've done. Now, if you look at this, there's actually a concrete barrier along the base of that part of the enclosure. So if Garfunkel comes over and tries to dig there, he's really going to hit concrete and not going to get very far. But then that concrete kind of curves around here and as I get into my area here where I'm allowing him to dig look at this he can dig and actually dig underneath this so how are we going to stop Garfunkel from actually digging underneath this fence here so this is a good example what I've done is, is all the way along the bottom of this section you're going to see that there's four by fours all the way around on the bottom. There's four by fours around, treated four by fours around on the bottom. And inside each one of these four by fours, I've actually have this. I've got a, a half inch steel rebar. And what I did was I drilled a hole into the four by four and drove these 24 inch pieces of rebar down into the ground about every 18 inches or so, maybe 20 inches apart. And so what that does is that provides me a barrier. So if Garfunkel starts to dig under here, and especially if he starts digging way back in that back corner, then he won't be able to go underneath the fencing. He's going to hit those rebar stakes, rebar posts, I guess you could call them and he won't be able to dig out. That was one of my biggest concerns in providing a area for Garfunkel to dig was that I did not want him to have the ability to dig under the fence. So putting half inch rebar, 24 inches in the ground, about 18 inches apart, will discourage him from digging under the fence. He can dig all he wants inside of here, but he's not gonna be able to get out of the enclosure beyond that chilling fence. One of the questions I get is, how high should an enclosure be? Typically the rule of thumb is, the enclosure should be two times the height of the turtle. So if your turtle is like mine, it's about nine, 10 inches, 11 inches tall, it should be 20 inches or 24 inches. So that's why this enclosure looks the way it does. Just as a quick precaution, when you are putting up your enclosures, take a look at any plants that are close to the enclosure that the turtles may get access to. Now, there's a geranium right there which may grow underneath that fence, which will be fine. The problem is, this plant right there and that plant right over there, the purple one, that's lantana. And lantana is very bad for tortoises so i pulled it back away from the enclosure and i'm going to be transplanting these plants later on but just a note check all of the plants around your enclosure to ensure that those plants are not something that will harm your tortoise and one last point if you do have your tortoise in your backyard 
they will move your furniture. I actually keep my chair hidden back here in the corner. So when I put my chair out, I can sit in the chair here, but if I keep it out, Garfield will carry that sucker around the yard on his back, not knowing it. So they are pretty destructive on things you have in the yard. The bottom line is the most important part of an enclosure is that the, tur that the uh, tortoise cannot see over top. If they see over top, they're gonna wanna go through it. If they can see through it like a chain link fence, they're gonna wanna go through it. This, I've been doing this for years and they never really try to go through the fence. They just walk along the wood on the edge and then that's about it. So keeping it so they can't see over top or through it. I do have gaps you see in the, in the wood because that wood was crooked right there when I put it on. And there's gaps underneath the, on the grass there. But the turtles are so big, they actually look underneath, but they never really try to dig underneath. And I'm, people say that they have their turtles digging all the time and going underneath, but to tell you the truth, Simon never really digs. He's been here for years. Garfunkel, who's been here now for a month or so, hasn't tried to dig at all. He just kind of hangs out and does his thing. So I put in the enclosure that I thought was best for these guys, and it looks like it's working so far. So let's talk a little bit about microclimates. Microclimates within the tortoise enclosure. Today it's like 72, 73 degrees. We had some rain. We got about an inch, about an inch of rain a couple days ago. So we got a good soaking in the yard. Um, it warmed up the last couple days and gives the tortoises a chance to really get out and walk around. Microclimates are important because you want to the tortoises to have an environment that is a lot like what they would see in their native environment. So let's talk a little bit about what my enclosure has and the different microclimates. So Simon has been basking in the sun a little bit today outside of his enclosure. And right now let's do a test. His, his shell right now is registering at 104 degrees. I mean, he's actually, his shell is 104 degrees. That's pretty good considering it's only 72 degrees today. This center grass area, it registers 73, 74 degrees. So I've got 73, 74 in this area, but the, as you look into the shaded area, we're, we're sitting at 50 degrees there. So I've got three dis or two distinct areas there, 50 degrees in the shade, I've got 75 degrees here in the sun. And then if you take a look at the rock area, the rock area is 95 degrees. So depending on what Simon wants to do, he has multiple areas to get into, multiple microclimates. A cooler, wetter environment, a warmer, mid-warm, dry environment, and then a really warm environment at 95. And I see him walking all over from one area to the other, basking in the sun, grazing. He sometimes grazes in this area, then he goes over to the shade. Now this is Garfunkel's area. Now it's almost identical to Simon, except it's a little bit bigger, or a lot bigger, probably about twice the size since Garfunkel is our big boy. We've got the cooler area over there where I can put in his food, some of the grass, and he was eating pumpkin this morning. The warmer area that he grazes and, and eats on, and then the rock area. Garfunkel's been basking in the sun, sitting here on the rocks, and let's see, what's his shell temperature? See, his shell temperature is only 85, but he, he was overeating about 15 minutes ago, so I think he came up here on the rocks to try and warm up, so it gives you an idea of how the microclimates actually work. Just a few minutes ago, I tested Simon's shell, who's been sitting there for a while, and he was up 100 degrees, his shell was, but now, as you can see, Garfunkel is, he's only about 80 degrees, so I think he's trying to warm himself up a bit. So microclimates are very important to keep your turtle, your tortoises healthy. I've done pretty good and I was very lucky into having a 
an area where I have shade, sun, and rock. When it's 100 degrees out here, the shaded area is really nice. It does stay really cool. Um, in the sun, when they are eating, they do like to eat the grass that's in the sun as opposed to the, to the cooler grass. I'm not sure why that is. And then obviously they have the rocks. And those rocks really help them warm up on days like this when it's only 72, 73 degrees. So when you're doing your enclosure, try to set up microclimates for your tortoises. When you talk about housing for sulcata tortoises, they need an environment where they can have room to get in, feel comfortable, and actually stay warm in the winter or at night when it gets cool. People use everything from like dog houses to igloos, um, plastic doll houses or custom built ones like this. The flooring is is debatable depending on what people do. Now the flooring in this one I'm going to take, take over and have you take a look at. So I want you to take a look at Simon's house. Now Simon likes to dig so he's dug out of here and dug under this a couple times so what I've done is, is I've got concrete, those are concrete slabs. I know a lot of people don't have access to those, but those concrete slabs go about 18 inches in the ground. So now he just, using the flooring here, he just digs on one side, digs the other. But he likes this side a lot more because of the fact that I've got a heater in here and that heater keeps this this house about, about 75 degrees during the day and it'll get down to 70 at night. Garfunkel's enclosure is a little different. I'm going to be building him a permanent structure up above by his dirt area I have exposed for him to burrow now, but right now I'm using very temporary. I've got I've got two pallets essentially lying, laying up against each other. I put on some I've got two or three, I think I've got three heavy duty blankets. One's actually a sleeping bag. And then I've got this tarp on top to keep them dry. There's also a heater in there. I've got a heating pad that keeps the temperature inside of this enclosure around 75 degrees or so. Let's see, what is it right now inside? Yeah, see inside is about 70 degrees right now inside on the ground. So the, it gives him a chance to do that. I don't have, he can't dig in here like he, like Simon can. So that's why I have the other enclosure or the other section up on the hill that he can dig when he wants. So right now we think he's trying to warm up and get a little sun into his, into his bones. So when you're dealing with large tortoise enclosures, make sure they can't get out, make sure they can't see out, make sure it's sturdy enough that if they do try to push up against it, they're not getting out. And it's safe. In other words, it's an enclosure that allows them to roam freely around the yard in microclimates and giving them the ability to feel like they're in their native environment. So in the next video, we'll be talking about the diet for these guys, just to kind of get a feel for that. There goes a lizard right across the yard there. So until next time, this is Jeff. We're out.